Today we're going to be going over the different wallet types that men commonly use, what and who each wallet is best for, as well as the functions of each wallet type. We have examples of each wallet type to really show you the differences and to help you better understand them, as well as to figure out which one is best for you and your needs. I'm Bill Sweet and this is the Dad Bod. Wallets, they're everywhere. Every time I go clothes shopping, they've got wallets at the register for those impulse buys. Pretty much every guy has a wallet, but do they have the wallet they truly need? Not always. The word wallet came from the Greek word kibesis, which is the sack that was carried by the god Hermes, which translates to wallet. Prior to the wallets that we're now familiar with, until about 150 years ago, people carried what was called a flat purse. Basically, it was a coin purse. But that wasn't even the first. The oldest known example of a wallet belonged to Otis the Iceman, who lived around 3300 BC. It wasn't until around the 1700s when paper money was introduced, so up until that point, coin purses were pretty much the norm. In the 1700s was when we started seeing the flat case wallets, which was, for the most part, just a leather binding wrapped around paper money. It became popular among the middle class in the 1800s, and uh, it was in the 1900s when wallets began to look more like the wallets that we're familiar with today. I still remember my first wallet. It was blue, it was nylon with a Velcro strap, and uh, just to note, Velcro wallets will not be included in this video. In addition to the function of the wallets, they also need to be presentable. I'm 40. I mean, I'm 29. I'm way past the age where I would own a Velcro wallet. At this point, uh, either a type of metal or a type of leather wallet is really what's acceptable. But what kind to choose? Did you even know that there are more than one types of wallet? My dad carries a thick leather bifold wallet. My stepfather carries a checkbook wallet. My brother carries a bifold coin pocket wallet because he lives in Europe where they use a lot of coin money. My best friend still carries a chain wallet and a buddy of mine carries a minimalist money clip wallet. Everybody's needs and tastes are different and so are their wallets. There are different things that we should and probably shouldn't be carrying in our wallets, especially nowadays that almost everybody's got a cell phone. So things that are common to carry in your wallet, identification cards, credit cards, since the U.S. is predominantly using plastic money, you know, your medical cards, sometimes business cards, but that's probably better off on your cell phone and the same with, you know, photos. Things that are often seen in wallets but probably shouldn't be, store discount cards. Keep them in your car or on your phone. You may only use that card once every two to three months. You don't need it in your wallet. Social security cards, they're gonna get ruined in your wallet and they are a huge pain to replace. Receipts, there's, there's really no reason to keep a receipt with you for more than a few hours. Go home, put it in a drawer. Don't keep receipts for months or years in your wallet. And lastly, condoms. The wallet's just gonna ruin them. Unless you wanna take that chance, don't keep it in your wallet. Now, one last thing before I get to the wallets, I wanted to say that one of the more recent features that wallets have nowadays is what's called RFID blocking. When you're out and about traveling or just, you know, to and from work, there are occasionally bad people. They can carry a device in their sleeve or in a little bag, and if they get it close enough to your wallet, just by walking past you, it can read the information of your credit or debit cards that has the tap feature, which means they can copy it and steal your money whenever they want to. That's why so many wallets nowadays have RFID blocking is to prevent that from happening. It's most common in bigger cities where there are bigger crowds, especially public transport such as subways or buses, and it's very common in tourist areas. Pretty much any place that's going to have a tour guide book has people trying to take advantage of the tourists. So if you have a credit card or a debit card with a tap feature or a passport that uses it, it's probably best to invest in a wallet with RFID blocking. These ones here are the bifold wallets. We're starting with it because it's the most traditional style and to date it's still the most common wallet type. The bifold wallet that we know now with the card slots became popular in the 1950s when the first credit cards came out, but it's really been around since closer to the 1900s without the credit card slots. It's a piece of fabric, usually leather, and it's folded in half. This one here is the bifold wallet from Exter, and as you can see, it's got pockets for your cards and it's got pockets for your bills. These wallets can be fancied up or they can be dressed down, but the thing that makes it a bifold wallet is that it is folded in half. Something that makes this particular wallet unique is that it's got a magnetic insert 
that uh, will give you a few extra card spaces and allow you to carry those extra cards as needed or you could take the middle piece out leave it home leave it in your car if you don't need it so this is the bifold wallet from extra with the magnetic insert and this is the king's loot wallet this one here is the trifold wallet you probably guessed it already the bifolds folded in half, the trifold is folded into thirds. The three sections of this wallet means more room for card storage and like I said, not just credit cards, but you know, before cell phones were the norm, people also carry business cards in their wallets, identification cards, medical cards, uh, concealed carry cards. This trifold wallet has been around for almost as long as the bifold wallet. It gives you more room for storing things in your wallet, which is good for some people, but it also makes the wallet bulkier and less comfortable to keep in your pants or your jacket pocket. Bulky wallets have been linked to spinal issues, so it's really not healthy to keep a bulky wallet in your back pants pocket. This one here is the Extreni trifold wallet. As you can see, the cash goes into this main pocket here, and then we've got six pockets for cards and stuff. You can fit at least two cards in each one of these pockets, which means you can hold 12 or more cards with this wallet, which would make it quite bulky. This one here is the hipster wallet. I did not come up with the name. I'm just saying what it is. Um, as you can see, this wallet is quite large in size. This one is from a company called Marshall. I'm going to have links to all of these in the video description in case you're interested in any of them. So this wallet is huge. Look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 25 spots for cards in this wallet. Well, Cards, credit cards, pictures, college ID, you know, whatever you need. There's 25 slots plus the two slots for the different build types. Now, just to note, not all hipster wallets have the dual currency pockets. It just so happens that this one does, which means we can explain wallets with that option now. And at this point, some of you are probably curious about why somebody would need two pockets for bills in a wallet. If you've ever traveled to another country, you want to keep your American currency separate from your local currency. You don't want to accidentally give somebody a $50 bill when you meant to give them 50 pesos. $50 bill is $50. 50 pesos is the equivalent of about $2.50. Just the same if you're in Europe, you could get in trouble if you try to pay an American currency. Many places don't accept it and they will scold you if you try. I know that from experience. Military who are stationed overseas as well as contractors who work overseas often choose a wallet with two areas for cash so that way they can keep their currency separate. They use the American currency on base and then they use the local currency when they're off base. Now, this one here is a zipper wallet. Technically it's also a bifold wallet but for this example it's a zipper wallet. It gets its name as you guessed because of the zipper closure. This one here is the Notting Hill wallet by Voltskin, and I absolutely love this wallet. It was my go-to wallet until I tried out the extra magnet bifold wallet that I showed you. This wallet is awesome. It's got a few card slots on the outside. It's got a few more on the inside. It has a cash holder here, a coin holder here. And then what's really cool about it is this retractable quick card access tab. You put your most used cards in here, just pull this tab to access them quickly and easily. Now, not all zipper wallets have those different features, but what makes a zipper wallet is zipper wallet is you know the zipper closure. Again, I'm going to link to all these in the video description. And then we have the chain wallet. These were created by bikers in the 1950s, so that way they didn't lose their wallets while riding. They skyrocketed in popularity in the 1970s with the punk rock scene, both for style and function. You know, so you don't use your wallet in the in the mosh pit. A wallet can fall into more than one of these categories. As you see, this is the Marshall hipster wallet and it does have a chain so it's a hipster wallet and it's a chain wallet and it's also a bifold wallet if you don't like the chain but like the wallet you can buy it without the chain or just remove the chain this next one is both a long wallet or a cult wallet and a checkbook wallet so this one in particular is made in Italy it's made from a company called Tony Perro long wallets are as the name suggests long they would usually be worn in uh, a jacket pocket, which is often a bit deeper, so having a longer wallet meant it was easier to get out. And then yes, there are some people who prefer to wear the long wallets in their back pants pocket. This style of wearing it is mostly popular among the rodeo crowds. They're usually long enough to carry many cards, such as this right here. It has 
11 slots for cards. You can fit probably one to two in each slot. It's got these three pockets here and then a large pocket on top, which can be used to carry any number of things such as cash or whatever else you need to carry and even things you don't need to carry. There's room. This particular wallet also has a slot for carrying checks or a checkbook, which is why it's also known as a checkbook wallet. This is the kind of wallet that my stepfather carries. He's a, he's a little bit more old fashioned, prefers to use a check over a credit card because some people believe it's too easy to overspend when you're just swiping a card. But if you write out a check and then you note it in your check ledger each time, uh, you're less likely to overspend. And honestly, he's probably not wrong. So these ones right here are called credit card holders or credit card wallets. This one is from a company called Axwell. This one is from The Ridge, and this one is from Tony Peroth again. These are wallets that are made primarily for credit cards and maybe a little cash. It's a type of minimalist wallet. You slide the cards that you need out, slide them back in when you're done. They really don't have a whole lot of space for you to carry things that you don't need on a daily basis. These tend to be made out of a 6061 T6 aluminum or carbon fiber, sometimes titanium. Most often, almost all of these are RFID protective since their main purpose is to carry credit cards. And what's cool about this one, the Axwell one, is they not only listen to the feedback about their wallet, but they review feedback from other similar wallets and try to incorporate the upgrades to their wallet based on that feedback. So they're, they're just listening to everybody's suggestions and trying to make a wallet that everybody loves. And I think they did pretty good with this one. And then for people who carry those, sometimes they'll need to carry something like this, which is a money clip. This one is from Exter. Money clips were quite popular at the upper class in the 1800s and then the early 1900s. You'll sometimes see them by themselves like this, and other times you can see them connected to a wallet like this Ridge one and this Axwell one. This here is a travel wallet by Bellroy. These are not typically meant to be an everyday wallet. They can be for some that travel regularly or need to keep their passport on them, but for most people, this is what you would bring with you while you're traveling abroad for work or for vacation. It's got room here for your passport, plenty of room for different currency back here, a few credit cards. This one has a pocket for one passport with extra room for other passports. Some will give you pockets for two passports. Some will give you enough pockets for your whole family's passports. Just make sure you don't lose it if you're carrying everybody's passport. And then one thing that many of these have is right here, the small pen. You always want a pen with you while you're traveling abroad because there's always forms that you have to fill out. You got to fill out forms on the airplane. You got to fill out forms when you're going through customs. There's always forms. This one's got this mini pen right here with a replacement ink cartridge. And then one of the most important things about this wallet, like nearly all of the wallets that you've seen today, it's RFID protective. With credit cards and passports, you're more at risk while traveling abroad and you need a wallet that's gonna keep those things protected. Now, I did order a wallet with a decent sized coin purse. I actually ordered two. The first one got lost in the mail, so I ordered a second and it got delayed. Next day shipping, and for some reason, Amazon sent it from North Carolina not to where I'm at in North Carolina, but they sent it to Pennsylvania and then to Colorado. I notified them that it's going the wrong way and that it was supposed to arrive yesterday. And they gave me a free month of Prime for my troubles, but it's still going to take another two to three uh, days for it to make its way from Colorado back to me. Less than an hour from where it originally started at the warehouse. So for the coin purse, I'm going to be using the Notting Hill and also the uh, extra uh, bifold magnet wallet. As you can see, there's a spot right here where you can put coins. Uh, same with here on the extra wallet. It's got this spot right here where you can put coins. In many countries outside of the United States, they've stopped printing lower denomination bills such as ones, fives, and tens because it costs too much to keep up with them. And they've saved money by doing that. And they just print coin versions instead because coins last longer. Therefore, people need wallets that hold coins. I use a wallet that holds coins because I often need quarters for parking and my kids are obsessed with quarter gumball machines. Another new one that's gaining popularity lately is the cell phone wallet. This here is the ESR Hillock wallet stand. Uh, it works as a cell phone stand both ways, and it's a wallet. Holds two to three cards and an ID card. Sometimes these are built into the cell phone case, and sometimes they're built to connect to the cell phone case. This one is magnetic, so it connects using the MagSafe. These are currently most popular among teenagers and folks in their early 20s. They basically prevent the need for having to actually carry a wallet. You just carry your cards with you on your cell phone, and that's all you need to take with you. The last type here is the slim and minimalist wallet. Similar to the card holder, they focus on carrying the bare minimum. This is the extra parliament wallet. 
You can hold six cards in this main card holder here, and then it's got a few pockets for things like your medical card, your driver's license, concealed carry, and then it's got a band where you can put a few bills. That's all the wallet types that we have for the men's guide to wallets. Let me know in the comments which type is your preference. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the dad bod. Next week, we're going to have an awesome video where we compare two wallets that are made out of gold. Yes, made out of actual gold. You don't want to miss that. So in the meantime, check out this video right here and I'll see you there.